Hey there guys, Crossflux here with something slightly different. Today I won't be doing a video walkthrough at all. In fact, I'll be discussing an Owlboy theory. For those of you who don't know, I currently have an Owlboy video series up on my channel right now. It's kind of a, a blind let's play, pretty much. I'm doing this theory today because, although I recently beat the game, I just can't wait to talk about my ideas. I have plenty of them surrounding this game. So, this theory video will assume that you have played through Owlboy completely, or that you don't care if the events of the story and characters are spoiled for you. So, with that being said, let us begin. I will start by addressing the title of this video, What is the Loop? Well, this is an important plot piece that the game brings up fairly late into the story. You really don't start hearing about it in solid details until the final area of the game. But, the game seems to make quite a big deal out of it, outright stating that the concept of the loop is what started the downward spiraling of the Owl Society. Whatever this mysterious loop is, it was apparently enough to mess with the minds and the culture of the Owls to the point of having their society fall apart. As you know, these Owls were incredibly advanced. They invented crazy stuff like teleporters, robots, flying machines, transformers... transformers. Yes, transformers. They greatly understood the concepts of mathematics, they had many, many artisans and philosophers, and they had mastery over the elements. Wait, mastery over the elements, you say? So the loop was the Fire Nation the whole time? Okay, not really, but I will be getting into my real theory in just a minute. First, let's take a look at some quotes from the game concerning this loop. The Hex is complete. The world is destroyed. Looping. As you can see from the video footage, that this is displayed on a computer screen in the lava section of the floating continent. I believe this was written by Agolius after he fired up the hex machine and it backfired by having all the continents begin their floating ascent into space. It was here that the existence of the loop was hypothesized. The existential anguish from the discovery of the loop permeated owl society. Rites began, and the Owl Temple was abandoned. So this quote here is from the extended version of Volume 1 of the Book of Nocte that you can find in the Floating Tower, the final area of the game. They were determined to break the loop, and worked tirelessly to advance their technology and knowledge. Finally, the solution was presented, a hex that would upend the laws of the universe. But it was a disaster. The hex failed, and the world would never be the same. So similar to the last quote that I read, this is from Volume 2 of the Book of Nocte. I see you. Did my machines and theories break the loop at last? Did I break the world? This message is spoken to you, I guess telepathically, by Nocte after you retrieve the third and final golden coin, which is in the final area of the game. For this loop, and every loop that will come. Repeating. This is part of Solus's chant to the anti-hex totem before the final battle of the game. The relics were made after the owls made a fateful discovery. A discovery that sent owl society into infighting and chaos. The loop. What is the loop? I'm not certain, but the owls were obsessed with it. They worked for centuries in a desperate struggle to find a way to end the loop. Finally, they found a solution. A hex that would alter the laws of nature to end the loop forever. So this is perhaps the most enlightening of the quotes that I've presented. This is when Solus is finally explaining uh, everything to Otis and the gang after he's defeated. Now one other thing I'd like to discuss before moving on and proposing my idea for what the loop is, is I want to talk about Nocte's hologram in the sanctuary that you can only get to by getting all three golden coins. So, Nocte's hologram here is, in my opinion, the most enlightening of all the holograms. In it, and I will paraphrase here, he pretty much states that math is awesome and that it's very crucial. With math, you can predict many different things. He then brings up the concept of a wave function. Okay, mini quantum lesson. Disclaimer, I'm no quantum physics PhD, 
This is just what little knowledge I've learned from my nuclear engineering classes and from a few sites that I found online. So, a wave function takes two different parameters, position and time. The purpose of the wave function is to determine the probability of a particular particle's existence at that position at that time. So extrapolating this concept on a much larger scale, we see that Nocte has somehow been able to apply a wave function to his own life. He plugged in the appropriate position and time coordinates, beep boop, beep boop, only to find a 0% chance of him existing, meaning that he would be dead. With all that we've talked about so far, I still haven't proposed my theory concerning the loop. So here we go. I propose that the loop refers to a repeating of events across the multiverse. Multiverse? Whites? That's right. My theory assumes that the world of Owlboy employs a multiverse theory. Now part of me is a little upset about this because I'm really not a fan of multiverse theory in general. But I can forgive it for this game because of the way that it's handled, and I'll get into that shortly. First, I should discuss why I think there's a multiverse in the game in the first place. Well, for starters, Owlboy is a video game. So every single time you play through the game, you could view it as a parallel universe to the story presented in your last playthrough. Even though things are primarily the same, each time you play the game you may find Buccaneary's coins in a different order, or you may leave an enemy on a particular screen alive, whereas last time you played the game, you killed them. Or you may get caught by the pirates during a stealth section. But Crossflux, I hear you say, this train of logic could lead you to say that all video games implement multiverse theory. Well, you're right. Eh, I guess you got me. Well, I'll go home then. Okay, but seriously, here's some more stuff to back up my theory. Later on in Nocte's hologram message, he says that there's a strange inconsistency. In one calculation of the wave function, he sees that Otis will die in a great battle above a floating city, while in another calculation, he sees that Otis is here in the sanctuary witnessing this very hologram. This can't happen in the same universe. Wanna know why? To unlock the Eternal Sanctuary, you require all three golden coins. One of those coins is in the floating tower, the final area of the game. It's beyond a point of no return. You have to take a rocket ship to get there, and as soon as you get there, the ship kind of crashes and becomes inoperable, so there's no feasible way for Otis to have retrieved the coin from the final area and returned back to the main world, at least not in the same timeline. At best, Otis could gather two of the coins, and then he goes on to complete the anti-hex. Yet to view this hologram message where you're hearing this very quote be explained to you, Otis somehow has all three coins that unlock the Eternal Sanctuary. So how? Well, just before you fight Solus, there's a ball of light that allows you to return to the past and relive memories of Veli. This is how you're able to take that coin from the final area and place it in the proper keyhole to unlock the sanctuary. But this ball of light doesn't appear until either you've beaten Solus or died fighting him at least once. So it's apparent that there's some weird parallel universe wibbly wobbly timey wimey looping stuff going on. This is one of the many reasons why I love this game. They really pushed the medium of video gaming. D-Pad took into consideration something unique that you can only do in a video game. For example, each time you play a movie, it'll be exactly the same. The camera will linger on a character for precisely the same amount of time each and every time you play that movie. The characters will deliver the exact same lines in the exact same way. Same goes for a book. Each time you read it, the story is the same. Now, granted, you can use your imagination to view the scenes of a book differently each time you read it, but if you factor in your imagination, then these things could be said for all forms of art. The point I'm trying to make here is that video games are an interactive medium. This really opens up different ways to tell a story that other forms of art struggle to accomplish. I'm not going to say it's impossible for other forms of art to 
become a form of interactive medium. I'm just saying that video games are a much easier way of doing it. So again, I'll state my theory. The game implements a multiverse, and the loop refers to a repeating of certain events across the various timelines. Not every single thing is the same, of course. It wouldn't be a proper multiverse theory if all the universes were exactly the same. It's just that certain events are fixed, kind of like in Doctor Who. So Nocte's words about the wave function that describes his life make more sense when you apply multiverse theory to it. No matter which universe you look at, events lead up to his death at the hands of Egolius' machines. So say in one universe, Nocte slept in on the day of his death. Well, then perhaps Egolius' machine went rogue and busted into his house and took him out there. Silly proposition, I know, but that's the stuff I'm getting at. So certain events throughout every single parallel universe are fixed or constant. The Owls didn't like the idea of certain events being constant. That would imply that free will either doesn't exist, or that it doesn't always take precedence over the laws of nature. Being deep into philosophy, this probably ruffled a few feathers. <coughs> so many in their society, Nocte especially, wanted to either prove that free will still exists, or to make it so that free will will exist by eliminating that particular law of nature. Now, I understand that many fans have come to the conclusion that the loop refers instead to the rebooting of the universe. Like, after the universe ends, it's reformed and the events play out the same way, over and over again. Hence the name of the loop. It's kind of like in Super Mario Galaxy, how the universe soft reboots at the end of the adventure. A point that really helps to drive this idea home is one of the final words that the Ozio shaped character says to Otis after the anti-hex is completed. Maybe one day, in this life or the next, you'll learn about the loop. But there are far more rewarding things to learn about the universe than how it ends. So this heavily implies that the loop has something to do with the ending of the universe. However, my theory still has something to say about this quote as well. I interpret it in a slightly different way. According to my theory that Owlboy makes use of multiverse, and that Nocte can use his wave function to predict pretty much anything, I think it's safe to assume that he could use his function to predict the end of the universe. So what if every universe ends the same way? Like the ending of the universe is one of those fixed events that I've talked about earlier. This could be why that Ozio character relates the loop to the end of the universe. The name for the loop could be in reference to how a chain is composed of links that are all looped together. They're connected. Likewise, the multiverse of Owlboy has an infinite number of universes that are connected together, or looped together, by the various fixed events. One other quote that seems to shake the foundation of my theory are the final words of Nocte's hologram message. Tomorrow is the day that I die, Otis. It is my hope that by doing so, my prediction will come true, so that I will see you here today, and perhaps in the next loop, I won't have to die after all. This definitely seems like Nocte is saying that in the next life, or the next incarnation of the universe, maybe things will play out differently because the loop will have been broken. Once again though, I apply this quote in a slightly different way. I suggest that when Nocte talks about the next loop, he means in the next universe, like the next universe over from ours, the next link in the chain, if you will. Basically saying in another parallel universe, perhaps I won't die. So in summary, the multiverse of Owlboy can be imagined as a wibbly wobbly intertwined chain. Each parallel universe makes up one link of this crazy looking chain. These links are all connected to different links in different ways, and in many cases, they are linked in more than one place. These connecting points represent fixed events that happen in each of these connected chains. The loop refers to the viewing of the multiverse as this complicated chain. Well guys, that's about all I really want to talk about for now. I have plenty more ideas for theory videos in the near future, and I'll be uploading those as soon as they're done. But, in the meantime, I'm super stoked to hear your thoughts on the matter. Do you think my theory sounds plausible? What did I miss? Where did I make too great of a leap in logic? Please, let me know. 
Trust me, I won't be offended. Making this theory was fun, and I put a lot of time into it. It's kind of like my baby, but I can take being wrong. I just want to uncover the secrets of the game because I enjoyed it so much. But remember, while you're busy theorizing, be blessed too. I love you guys. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.